Okay, so we've almost uh, looked at everything that we need to see with the graphs. Uh, I would just like to take a look at one more, um, at a couple of the situations actually. In the previous uh, examples, what we saw was uh, an object in which we saw the slope of the position time graph increasing, and so therefore uh, the velocity was increasing. As the slope got steeper and steeper, the velocity was increasing. And this graph, if I were to make this graph look like the VT graph, I were to make a VT graph for that same motion, then I would find that I would see a line, a straight line, sloping upward as I got higher and higher velocities as time goes on. So these two graphs are actually graphs of the same object. This is how the position time or displacement time will look. Here's how the velocity time would look. So let's take a look at some other examples. And uh, I would like to look at three different examples. So we just looked at speeding up in the positive direction. Let's look at speeding up in the negative direction. And so what I would like to do is I'd like to take the full sheet of paper and I would like to break it up into three sections. And this will give us the uh, space to look at three different examples. Okay. And um, let's take a look at, we looked at speeding up. So for example, the previous graph could have easily have been um, a car that was at a stoplight and the light turns green and then the car speeds up as it moves away from the light. Let's take a look at what it looks like uh, for an object for this example. Free fall. Free fall from rest. So what does it look like to uh, free fall from rest? So there's my uh, displacement time graph. Let's sketch a velocity time graph. Okay, and what I would like to see is an object which started with no velocity. We're going to free fall. Free fall means I'm going to allow it to drop. So it's going to fall under the acceleration of gravity. And, and we'll take a look at a, little, uh, uh, a few examples of gravitational um, problems in just a moment. Um, in fact, most of these uh, objects that I'm going to look at are um, essentially objects that are moving as a result of gravity. We'll start with a situation in which we just drop the object from rest. Well, obviously, uh, if we're going to drop an object from rest, then we would have to be somewhere above the ground. So if we assume that the ground was at zero, then essentially what we would need to um, do is drop the object here, and the shape of the graph would look something like this. Now, how do I know that this is, is right? Well, first of all, I have an initial position which is above the ground level, and secondly, you know that the slope of the line represents the velocity on the displacement or the position time graph. So here, I said that this was at rest, so therefore I need a slope that is perfectly flat. Flat with no slope. Slope is zero. Velocity, excuse me, is zero at the uh, beginning of the motion. Now what happens is that, what we see is that the slope is decreasing, that is to say going into the negative direction, and it's increasing the value of its negative slope, which means that as the negative slope increases, the negative velocity is increasing. So I'm getting an increasing negative velocity. Or my velocity is my speed, if you want to think of it this way. My speed is picking up, but the speed is pointed in the negative direction. So I have negative velocity. Now how does that look like on the VT graph? Well remember, we had no velocity here, so that means that's very simple. There's no velocity. I'm plotting this on the uh, origin. Now where do I go from there? I find that I have an increasing negative direction. Negative slope, negative velocity. So on the VT graph, I would have something that would look like this. I start with no velocity. The velocity becomes increasingly negative. More negative as time goes on. So I see that the line is getting lower and lower and lower into the negative um, area in here. And, of course, just to remind you, so what we saw here was no slope, 
equals no velocity. Okay. And uh, more negative slope equals more negative velocity. Over here we saw no velocity. It's at the origin. And what we see is increasingly more negative v, the velocity. Okay? It would still be true if I were to go ahead and calculate this area. So a negative area, area, sorry, equals negative displacement. Let's go back to the position time graph and see if that actually looks like that's the case. I started up here at a high value. Let's say that this value was 25. I ended up down here on the ground. Now the change in displacement or the change in position is going to be the final position or final displacement minus the initial position or displacement. So in this case I have 0 minus positive 25 and 0 minus 25 would give me negative 25. A negative displacement, which is true, I am traveling in the negative direction, and that's exactly what this graph is going to give me. I'll find this shaded area will be negative, not because of the time, of course time is always going to be positive, but because the v was negative. So I end up with negative v times t, and obviously you should recognize that I wouldn't simply multiply v times t, I would take one half v times t in order to look at the area underneath this line, or above this line if you want to think of it that way. Okay, so that was an object falling from, uh, from rest. Let's take a similar situation, but this time let's have the object start with positive velocity. So we're going to have x, negative x, v, and negative v, and time on this axis. So in this uh, uh, example, this is an object thrown upward. Now, obviously if you throw an object upward, that object is going to come down. So in this case, the graph looks something like this. I see that when I throw the object up, I have a very steep slope at first. Eventually the slope becomes very flat. Right? So here I have a very steep slope. And as time goes on, of course, gravity is going to slow down the object. It's going to slow the object down, and at the very top of the throw, the object will have no velocity, so I see a very flat slope. And then I will see the velocity begin to pick up in the negative direction. So I start to see that I start having a negative slope, and that slope is becoming increasingly more and more negative. Okay, so object thrown up with cost positive velocity. Constantly feels the acceleration of gravity, which is constantly changing it, not only to the point where it's zero, but then continues, but then continues into the negative uh, direction over here. Now, think for a second, before I draw it, what would the VT graph look like? Remember, I started with positive velocity. I had at one point no velocity, and then at the end, I had a negative velocity. I changed it uniformly. That is to say that although the displacement looks like a parabola, the VT graph will not. I had a positive velocity. My positive velocity became less and less and less until finally I had no velocity at all. That's this flat point up here on the top. And then it continued. So this actually forms a straight line. The slope of this line is going to be the value of gravity. In this case, negative 9.8, or you can also use negative 10 if you prefer. Um, and it matches the two graphs. The two graphs match. So at first, you can see what's happening as I come up to here is I have a positive displacement. right? I went from 0 up to some positive number, maybe up to positive 25. So 25 meter displacement in the positive direction. And if I calculate the area up until my velocity was 0, I will find that I have a positive d, a positive displacement, or a positive delta x. 
And then what happened was I hit zero velocity and began to move into the negative velocities or the negative directions. So this is going to be negative d. And you can see that the areas of these two are equal, so that at the end of the motion, when I finally stopped, when the motion ended, then I would actually have no displacement. The positive displacement would have canceled out the negative displacement, and that's exactly what happened, right? We threw the object up in the air, the object went up, it came straight back down. And just for to, to make a note, this is not the shape of the path of the object. The object went straight up in the air and then came straight back down. Remember, this is a graph of position versus time. Right? It's, not a, it's not a picture of the motion of the object. It wasn't thrown like a par uh, parabola. It was thrown straight up in the air. The velocity got slower and slower and slower, and then began to speed up in the, in the negative direction. Okay. One last